Wired. Unplugged. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's me, Jake Kulkowski, and welcome to Wired Unplugged episode 23. The hottest episode of the year. Uh, literally, it is very, very hot in the UK. Um, we got a we got a special episode. This is, I think, maybe the second time ever that me and Aaron have both had a whole podcast episode together with a guest the whole time. So, Aaron Cooper, my valiant co-host, how are you, sir? I'm good. Hot. Good. good. Hot. So, uh, just just to pre just to preempt this as well. So, last week I wore a unicorn hat because Steve and Gary set a ridiculous pres- precedent. I'm not doing that this week because it's so hot. And I can't be doing with that jazz. Yeah. Okie dokie. Well, <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about it. We should, we should be all right. And, and um, uh, we are joined by... Um, I was, I'm trying to think if I can make a barbecue joke quick enough, but I can't. So I'm just going to do it. Mr. Sausage a TV, hot everybody. Sausage. Half the coals I'm we jo- have. I'm joined by a hot <laughs> sausage. Let's go. So Mr. Sausage TV, Twitch partner of the ages, has joined us for the whole darn episode. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing brilliantly. John, how are you doing, Jake? John's fine. John's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, not so good now. No, no, I'm doing all right. Thanks. Like I say, I'm... I'm the mo- Londoners just generally say John. Yeah, it is actually a thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I got stranded in London this week. I uh, just wanted to get his moan out of the way first before we get into the good stuff. Uh, I've been away to TwitchCon Amsterdam. Uh, and I came home and the heat had melted. Not melted. No, not melted. Not melted. Had warped. The tracks, the train tracks. <clears throat> so unfortunately, I was stuck in London Euston, which is uh, anyone who knows London Euston. There's worse places to be, but yeah. not ideal. How have you guys found the general, uh, the heat? <laughs> Been all right? Been enjoying it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it, hot. It was it? awful. <laughs> A lot of wet towels on the head and... and Do you know, oh, sorry, we're, we're not sponsored by these people, but um, we ordered some of these magic cooling towels. Right, and you just put a bit of water on them, and you shake them. You get the water off, and then they just feel really cold, and you whack them around you. Huh. Um, we ordered them because of the like forty-two degree weather, whatever it was, um, and they were meant to arrive before that day, and they arrived at eight p.m. on the night of that day. Um, wow! So I didn't really get to make use of it, but they're really good, really good. All right, well that, that's, that's that's pretty good. And again, hashtag not sponsored. You yeah, I'll use post sausage at the checkout. Straight, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, we can hear a nice. That's how you know. That's how you know it's hot outside. Should we right. take a break? Should yeah, we go exactly. grab a yeah, grab yeah, a cone. Yeah. 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 Can you get me a corner? Oh, Cheers, mate. Match yeah. with Dyson. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So Flake. I, I I guess I'll tell you what might be a nice thing to do. So we've got a whole heap of propaganda as per usual, but um, we normally do a little interview segment. I think why don't we just all. Get to know each other a little bit first. This tries to sound. This sounds a little bit like group therapy, but it's more for the people at home because we actually both know Mr. Sausage TV. But Mr. Sausage TV, would you like to tell the fine folks at home who you are and what you do? Can't wait for the comments. Uh, I'm Mr. Sausage TV. <clears throat> I've been partnered since 2016 on Twitch. Um, the long old grind of 16 hours a day for six months straight that I used to do. Um. I don't know where to, to end that, really. It went downhill from there. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a long, old, hard game nowadays. Six, I mean, you're talking six years ago. So we yeah. started on FIFA. Um, I left that and become a variety streamer because I started missing out on a lot of titles that I wanted to play, see through, and I couldn't do because I was stuck to one game. Um and and that's basically it. I mean, I, I'm 39. I've got nine children, and uh, I don't earn enough to maintain them. That is uh, quite. <laughs> they're quite the numbers, to be fair. Nice. We we now all know you much better. Yeah, um, that that's very that, intimate. That's, that's, I mean, you, how much how much you want to know about me? <laughs> well, no. how, how 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 do you, do you remember how you got involved with Wired? Wired? Yes, yeah. I do remember. Of course, I do. I met you at Insomnia. My, I yeah. think it was my very first Insomnia because of nice. Zonda. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I love you, man. Um, <laughs> I do love Zonda. He's, he's out there in Amsterdam somewhere. He's his somewhere out there in the, in the wilderness. <laughs> and I love the guy. He inspired me to be a streamer in, in 2016. I watched him for a long time. Uh, so, yeah, I met Wired. I met, I met Mr. Aaron. Uh, um, 
Uh, and the other legend, should, I should have remembered, I should have wrote it down. Uh, Neil, Neil. Uh, what's his name? Oh, Neil. The one receding. Neil, yeah. that's it. I, I met Neil. And, uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, they, you two approached me in the bar and said, we are making a game, which was top secret at the time. Um, and oh God, I can't remember how, how the conversation kind of flowed, but yeah, that I mean, I can't remember how the conversation went, but that's how I met you in 2016 at Insomnia with, with Neil. Yeah. <clears throat> Neil, Neil Sausage, his name's Neil. Ne Neil Sausage, Neil uh, Sausage, it's John, John, John Doesn't Sausage, matter. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's how I came about Y Productions. It was like the first company that I'd ever met. And still, uh, I'm not even just saying this because I'm here, but I'm, it's still one of the best companies that I've got along with um, genuinely nice people, not snakes in the grass treating you horribly or wanting you to do this, that, and the other for, for certain titles or run through hoops. It's just guys and ladies just getting on. Oh, that's nice. Insomnia bringing people together. Insomnia for the people it, at home who don't know is kind of like a... <laughs> Well, how do you really describe I guess, it? I guess, it was I a, a, a land. It started as a LAN event. event. Um, yeah. like a, it was like the world's mm. largest LAN event, and then it added um, a a show, like a typical uh, convention, on as well, mm. so you could play games. So it's half gaming convention, half LAN party. Um, and then Twitch used to do it, didn't they? Tw yeah. Twitch used to do events there. Now they don't. We don't go as much. Yeah, and then which game is a very took it over, sad thing. They? Yeah, it's it's a very sad yeah. thing that tw they they did stages, they done mass amounts of uh, Twitch parties. Yeah, they've been really transitioning the I last few, few months in, in into uh, uh, yeah, I think I guess creator focused stuff. That's like one of their big things now. When I went there last, they were doing like there's a meet and greets and stuff or whatever. But right, so there was no one. In, there was no one in swimming pools in on the stage, just sort of floating around. Because there is on Twitch. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> actually, Lots of people floating. Yeah. <laughs> writing names on their heads. Okay. So actually, so like, so like most, you, you kind of um, talk about Twitch the way that a long-suffering football fan or husband talks about their love, you know? So Twitch, you, you, you are... Specifically Watford yeah. fans. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, 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 you know... Um, I think one thing we've all noticed is since the pandemic, there's been a huge boom of content creators who are just yeah. started off having fun. And yeah. uh, some of them now are trying to trying to take a sort of crack at it. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> that being the right word. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <clears throat> exactly. And and so uh, you've got quite a storied history with which you've been a partner what, for six years, I think. Right. Um, and you would have yeah. learned something. So. Can we talk a little bit about the beginning first, and then we'll talk about where we are now and see what we? The can beginning was amazing. So, so <clears> how <throat> how did you discover Twitch? Great. Can you remember how you found it, or when you first pressed that go live button for the first time? What was it like? Blimey. The first time I ever found Twitch was just a random search, um, and then I come onto the site, and it was just video games at the time. Um, amazing it was back then, uh, and then I found LT Zonda. As everybody from the community and stuff knows, um, I found him and he. I watched him playing the Grand Theft Autos and the role plays, and I was thinking, how on earth does this guy do this? Because it was all new, the, the the monitors, the lighting, the cameras. Back in back yeah. then, it was all fairly fairly new, and um, I then got the bug, and just wanted to do what he did. Whether or not I was going to make money from it, I didn't know. I didn't know I was <clears throat> going to become a full-time job. I just knew I wanted to do it. Um, so I got a lot of finance. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I financed my first PC from Bright House. Wow. So I got a lot of finance. Yeah. And um, just started. I just I, I, I took three months on YouTube just watching and learning videos about microphones, this, that, this, that. Uh, and then three months later, I started March 2016. In the March, and then um, I just knew there was this thing, you know, partnership. But at the time, it was something crazy like you needed 500 viewers, and then they yeah. dropped that to 125 concurrent, right? And that was very hard. I mean, that was very hard back then, the, the numbers they wanted, yeah. Um, and then I just got obsessed 
with streaming. I just become obsessed. I'm still obsessed now. You know, I'm knocking on 40 this year and I'm, I'm still obsessed with just everything from chatting to people that are lonely to making someone's day, you know, and then laughing. And, and, and they, I'll be honest with you, they get me through my days now. It used to be I want partnership. I'm doing everything I possibly can. So I, did, yeah. I was streaming 16 hours a day. I was drinking four monsters and rock stars a day. I was down just to stay awake. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I ended up in hospital twice because my stomach nearly went bang. Um, mm -hmm. So that stopped me drinking that. I cut my hours down a bit. And by then, Zonda came in the channel. And all of a right. sudden, this guy that inspired you is now there. And you think, and I, I literally, I did actually break down. I was like, holy crap. Like, this is the guy that inspired me to stream. It's yeah. the Messiah. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it was crazy. And, and it just escalated. And all of a sudden, because we was doing a charity for the wheelchair at the time as well, we were raising uh, 10 grand for, for Luke Woodley, which he got his chair. I think it was mm. 24 months it took to get, but he got it. Um, from doing that as well, it kind of exploded the channel. And the channel just exceeded it went it got so big so fast i then couldn't take the backlash i was not prepared for right um i just wasn't i wasn't prepared for the as, as well as the success that came a lot of bad stuff came you know and a lot of people out there know if you're a streamer the trolls the hate the it all piled into twitter and dms and i couldn't control it it was insane yeah um so that sent me on a on a bad spiral of uh, I'd say two years like into it, uh, a bad spiral of depression. So I ended yeah. up very depressed on tablets quite a lot. And there is a dark side to streaming. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. There is a dark side to streaming. And I think for everybody that's starting to stream now needs to be aware that they need a reality check because you could be sitting on zero viewers for forever. Yeah. It, it might go nowhere and that alone will you're, you're setting yourself up there and you're gonna you're gonna fail and be depressed about that yeah the other side is it blows up and you get all the toxic hate and again you know it's 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 a hard hard um business to be in yeah. you mentioned you've got, you've got to be mentally you've got to be mentally tough and mentally strong to be in streaming it's not just, oh, he sits there playing video games. No, it's long hours for little money next to sometimes no money. You might end stream, do a 12-hour stream, uh, nothing. That can be a hard hitter. But then you've got to think the people that do come in, do subscribe, make you affiliate to start with now. Affiliate program didn't exist when we, we started. Um, the, the changes in, in Twitch in general are huge. The, the affiliate program, the, the more categories, um, it's vast now. It's so big and it's like dog eat dog. It really is. You'll have streamers pretend to be your friend. You'll have yeah. streamers coming into your channel trying to poach people out. They'll befriend people in your channel on purpose to then go to their channel, bring them in. They mod them straight away. They never come back to your channel. All this, all these kinds of things happen and viewers just only don't see it, but it happens. Um, it's dog eat dog. But one thing I've learned in six years now Turn it on. Have fun with the video game you're playing. Enjoy the people that come in and your stream. That's it. Whereas before, I had high expectations, and yeah, I went, I went, I went pretty large, and then the collapse happened with my health, and I took a year off, and I, you know, it was it was quite bad. So it's up and down, up and down stream. It's very hard. You, you, you've mentioned two things that I'm going to smash together. Yeah, insomnia, Zonda. <clears throat> yeah. So you know, he comes into your chat, and then I think you know that year we met you at mm. Insomnia. You were in this very tight knit group that included Zonda as well. There was like this really tight knit group of people that were there to support each other and so on. Um, yeah. And yeah, so what, 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 what was that like to you for, again, someone that you, you admired? But then also, you know, a lot of those people have ceased gone. streaming. Gone. They, they've yeah. ceased streaming and they've moved on uh, to other things. And, and they were quite yeah. hefty individuals in terms of, you know, um, visibility 
um, yeah. on Twitch. Um, you know, what, 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 why, why do you think that is? And, and also during your difficult time, I believe what, what sort of advice did they give you during your, uh, your realization that, hey, this is actually slightly tougher than I imagined when things uh, got None. a bit too big. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk anymore. anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, I think Zon Zonda, um, there was a guy called Homeless Penguin, um, and right. I met him at a VIP event once. Uh, him and Zonda basically said the same thing. They were just be you and enjoy it. But the problem is, and ignore the hate. You right. can't. Right. And that's the hard thing. You can't. I can't remember your first question. Uh, the camaraderie, <laughs> the camaraderie at Insomnia. Yeah. Insomnia used to be amazing. And I don't know why Twitch have just stopped doing it because it used to bring the viewers to the streamers and vice versa. And then you used to build a rapport with these people. I used to love going to gaming events, meeting the viewers, meeting the subscribers, having a pint with them, you know, and them seeing you in real life, not just like this, you know, mm -hmm. they could see your legs. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it was, I think, I think when you meet people face to face and they realize what you're seeing on camera is what you're getting in real life. That's when they have a real big respect for you. Yeah. A lot of streamers that you meet are nothing like they are on camera. Um, and I've met a few, not naming any names. <clears throat> hmm. And they're not like they are on camera. They're very, they could be very arrogant or they could be very, you know, up themselves. Um, and that's one thing I've never, ever done is, is, is got a bit up myself. Maybe I got a little bit big headed back in the day when it was like, oh, look what's happening here. You know, you, <laughs> you're sort of walking around and you're thinking, this is like, I was always very humble still. I was still very humble. And anyone that met me at Insomnia or anything like that will, 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 will agree. Um, but yeah, I mean... What, what, what's, your, what's your take on um, TwitchCon? Is that something that you've been getting involved in? Because obviously Twitch... Can't afford it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can't afford it. Nine, I mean, I would love to go to TwitchCon, but again, I don't believe Twitch even... I mean, I don't believe they even offer you know, discounts to partners or anything like that. I mean, talking no. about Twitch in general, you know, you sign a three year contract with them when you first become partner. And then when that contract runs out, you're then just partnered with a rolling contract. And they, I mean, in my case, and I know it's happened to a few others, hence why you said a minute ago, a lot of them have disappeared, not necessarily about income, but it's more a case of, I think what's happened to me, my contract run out. And then you never hear from them again. Right. For the first year, for the first year when my contract yeah. ran out, I was always on the phone. They was always promoting. They was always say, "Oh, do you want front page? Do you want to put this? Put on featured." Da, 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 da. When that stops, and it does stop, um, your numbers in viewers will drop because that's where ninety percent of your viewers come from, front page and stuff like that. You can go onto a suggestion this thing and ask to be put on the front page, but you never yeah. hear back again. And like I say, I don't want to. I'm not slagging off Twitch, but there's not a support network. Um, there's there's no support network. I used to be able to talk to managers and DMs, always get a reply. I could show you DMs right now of the past, say, 20, and not had a single reply of, of any of them. And it does feel like you're kind of left. Right. Here you are. Here's your channel. Now get on with it. That's how it feels. But if it wasn't for the community that I've got right now, you know, they're keeping my head above water and we're still loving loving streaming. Um, I don't want to put people off of streaming if they're watching this. Don't be put off by streaming at all on Twitch. Twitch is an amazing platform. It gives you opportunities and that no other platform can. And personally, I think it's the best platform to stream on. Um, yeah. Right. It's, it's, very, it's very friendly and user-friendly. Okay. But be prepared. You've got to work hard. You can't just stream two hours a day and think you're going to make it or... Oh, I'm going to do this and the other. No, you've got to put your hours in and you've got to not necessarily kill yourself, but put that soul and passion into video games. If you've got a soul and passion for video games, I know there's other categories. I don't care about those. Right. <laughs> if okay. you want to sit in water, that's up to you. Okay. But yeah, I mean, the passion, the passion for video games, put a stream on and, and appreciate every single person that comes into your chat and their name pops up. Appreciate that person because they've took the time and effort to click your name, come in, write something. And I've always said, appreciate <clears> them. <throat> a lot of people just, there's a lot of streamers out there, don't talk to their chat. 
they will talk to their donations, and I, I, I hate that. Even if your chat's moving 100 miles an hour, pick one out. You know, quickly, oh, have a, have a flick of the eye. Just just recognize some people and appreciate it. It's, That's all uh, I would say. I, th- I was going to say, you know, what I guess we can maybe talk about that towards the end of the the podcast about, you know, we're very lucky to have somebody with a lot of experience here. And maybe you can kind of give your like Jerry's final thought about sausage final thought yeah. sausage <laughs> final thought about, about what, what actually <laughs> advice you can give to people to help them prepare things like things that are hard to prepare for like what happens when there is suddenly an influx of viewers and stuff like that. so we'll talk about that a I little do, mm-hmm. I, I, I do th- I do think the challenge is similar to um, a lot of game companies especially indie devs as well and even within the AAA space that you know the one thing that you'll hear is actually the prime competition is you're mm. vying for a person's time. A person has a finite amount of time and they can't play everything. So you are competing for attention for yeah. TV TV time, right? And it's yeah. the same with, with Twitch, right? There are, there are millions, there are millions of streamers now. Um, and as you said, it's important to appreciate the people that come in because yeah, you know absolutely. It's, you can't watch eighty people all at once. Um, yeah, uh, unless you're Batman and you've got that cool uh, thing that um, his man built. You know that bat thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> but no, but it, it is it is the case that you know you do have to appreciate the people that do come in because they have actively chosen to zone in on on, on you. So that has to be appreciated. Yeah. And build a bomb with that person as well. Yeah. yeah. I, could, I could name all my subscribers right now. I mean, it'll take me some time, but I, I could name them because we've got a rapport. Press and the red button you, now. You, got, <laughs> you do it you live. Miss Sausage TV, follow. Yeah, but yeah, you, you got build a rapport with them and get to know them because a lot of people I've I've got to know have got mental health issues and just take the time to talk to them, you know, um, and they'll come back yeah. and that's how you build your channel. And I will talk more about that a little later on because, yeah, that's a very, very unique situation, isn't it? That you're able to watch something and the person that you're interacting with can interact back. And that's something that, like you say, sometimes they don't, but they should. Mm. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about mm. that. And I, I guess, yeah, it would be nice to talk about how, like you say, it started off a little bit as in, um, you know, you, you, you were there to entertain the masses. And it ended up in a nice situation in a way where your audience and community really helped you. So um, we'll come yes. back to, we'll it, come back to I, that. I guess, I guess it is, it's like a Disney film, right? You, you have a film, you have the, the turmoil, you have the, the beautiful ending, and then you get that famous scene at the end, and they lived happily ever after. And it's like, okay, well, what happens after that film ends? Do you know what I mean? You've had your happy you know, ever You know, in this sense, we're, got... we're, we're not getting up nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when this ends, I'm going to watch TV. <clears throat> You're going to watch TV, okay? <laughs> no, but 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 it's like it is it, it is um, you, you know mean. what what is yeah, you know you, is. you you get to you know a, a peak moment of of euphoria and it's like okay well what's the onward journey from there how is it sustained so on but yeah yeah it's hard to keep that peak yeah, yeah very sure. much so. just before Jake obviously we've got some other stuff to talk about but yeah before we dive into that I've devised a little game for you do you both want to play a game? Uh, that's what Jigsaw said before he murdered people. So I'm a little bit so, suspicious, well, but I'll say I mean, yes. I'll, 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 I'll give I'll, it a go, John. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put this on the table. <clears throat> it's a fun, easy game, and the only person that can really lose is me. Wow. Yes, that's pretty so, deep. Sausage. Have you ever, have you ever translated your name into multiple different languages? You are watched by people around the world. And have you ever wondered what your name is in other languages? Because I have, I have, and I had had a few minutes before this to <laughs> pull some translations together, and it's down to you yeah. two to guess what language. This is first of all, this is amazing, no, right? No. Hang, hang, <laughs> hang on a second. I'm really sorry for this. I, my door's ringing, and I think it's my daughter trying to get in. So I hate. I'm okay. Not, I'm not going off to Google sausage in fifty languages. Okay. <laughs> Cheat, cheat. Just give me one second. <laughs> I'm ready. Sorry about that. My daughter is just like. <clears throat> All right. And sorry to you, Curtis, editor of the year every year. Okay, sausage in different languages. This is the game. Yeah, and and you okay. have to both guess which language it is. You get one guess each. Okay. I might help you along the way. <clears throat> okay. Um. So we're gonna start nice and easy. All right. Saucisson colère. French. 
Yes. Yeah. The accent. Oh, Gluten diverse. Yeah. Uh, German. German. Yeah. Okay. Goose and main sausage. Hey, are we going one each, or are we? Yeah. How's this? Is it fastest finger first? first? Fastest finger first. Oh my god. Oh, well, I'm uh, two new up then. Yeah. Goose and main sausage. I can't hear that one. Just woke up. Goose and Trust main. Trust Dutch. <laughs> nope. Spanish. No. It's Hindi. All right, I okay. thought I'd throw something in yeah, a bit more. Never okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, quivers. Quivers. Oh. <laughs> quivers. Quivers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag not sponsored again. Uh, no. No. It, um, Denmark. Greek. No. Greek. No. It's Afrikaans. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. All right. All right. One more. One more. <laughs> yeah. This this one might be easy, but if not, we'll see. Okotteru uh, sausage. Italian. That sounded what? Italian, though, didn't it? It did sound Italian. That sounded Italian. Uh, no, what's that? that that's. Uh, I only get one job. Portuguese. One. I don't know. No. Okay. So you've both got it wrong. I'll make it a bit easier based on your uh, your 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 new moniker. Sausage san. Oh oh, uh, Japanese. Yay! <laughs> oh my god. Uh, all right, okay. And there we go. Well, that is sausage wins trip around the world. Yeah, sausage, sausage, sausage wins. wins. That was I think sausage that was four one to you. Four yeah. one. Sausage. Oh, wins. four. That was a beat down. Yeah. Uh, do uh, how much I win? Uh, <laughs> you win a copy of Arcade Paradise, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I can't wait for that title. <laughs> I, was, oh, I need something nostalgic like that. I can't wait <clears> to play that game. Well, we'll talk more about that's that. And oh, that sounds like propaganda to me, which is fantastic news for me and my segue skills because the next section of this podcast is the wide propaganda segment. For anyone listening at home, the Welsh word for sausage is, of course, salsig. Thank you. Wire propaganda. Okay. Here we are, the wide propaganda segment. This is normally the segment, Sausage, where Aaron just talks at me about what's happening in the world of Wired. And I go, ah, like that. So you can do that with me. That's that's all you need to do. So uh, Aaron, ah! yeah, exactly. That's it. Your voice is to go up and octave. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. So, ah! so, so um, that is, um, ah! Aaron, what's happening in the world of Wired this week? Oh, it doesn't work that way around, does it? Okay, so this, this segment is going to be shorter than usual because we are getting ready for Gamescom. There's going to be some really, 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 really cool, exciting announcements. Okay. You're going to get some brand spanking new reveals, a little more information, uh, and people at Gamescom will be able to get their fingers on uh, some new gaming experiences. Okay. <laughs> are you both going? Yeah. I am. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's not for the most my, confidence. My streaming schedule is insane at the yeah, moment. Yeah, Gamescom is the twenty fourth to the twenty eighth of August. It's August. So yes, not. it's coming up soon. Definitely not. Cologne got to mate. incentive program though. They actually well, do have good you know just there. If, yeah, I was going to say if you go, you can introduce yourself as Vutendiverst, as we just all learnt. So, um, but yeah. Sure. So, you know, usually we have some cool news and stuff to share during this segment, but we're prepping for this magical moment at Gamescom. We've got some hidden gems, some secrets to share. So just, just bear with us. Ooh. Just bear with us while we uh, weave our web of games. Okay. Games. Very, very good. So that was just kind of a like, please await more information. Because there's a yeah. lot... Holding music, please. <laughs> there's a lot of... Um, a How lot many of... new games? Lots. Well, two. there is... Two. Very good. Very, very good. It's just really, I thought Mid set Bluetooth. Yeah, that, that was very convincing. That was very Thank convincing. You. For the Thank audio you. listeners at home, there, uh, Aaron looked like he was talking, but he wasn't. Okay. Wasn't. So very good. So that's that's a firm huh from me. Um, and what's and what's next in the the what's wide propaganda canon? So yeah. this this is this is just letting people know that the arcade paradise insert coin mini behind the scenes documentary series continues to go on episode five has just been released um and that has drained the team talking about gameception games within games uh and a little bit of a deeper deeper look into some of the things that are coming in the game um and i think you know if, if you haven't heeded the warning by now definitely check it out it's great if you want to learn about how games are made if you want to listen to the passion of the people that have made these games you want to you want to watch and check out this series it's really good informative um and it's 
Um, no BS, no BS. Just cut straight to the point and get to the heart of things. There's no hiding anything under the rugs. It's warts and all, um, but also bits and bites. Um, I for the audio listeners, um, sausage has brought like a really cool background that reminds me of the Arcade Paradise um, Dev Diaries. It's it's very good. I didn't want uh, compliment you on that in private. I wanted to make it public so everyone knows how much effort you put in. It looks pretty cool. It's and very it, cool. Uh, it's good. It's classic. Um, can't so, wait to play Arcade Paradise. Oh. <laughs> There's not long to go. So oh, not long to go. Uh, all right. Fresh content. And this <sighs> is this is really not um, propaganda, but more of a sort of request, I suppose. Um, but it's a good place to put it. So. Um, what I've, have we I've written, next? I've, I've written it all in caps, but I'm not going to shout it. It's quite okay. hot right now. Okay. But <laughs> for secret reasons, <laughs> secret reasons that we can't divulge, we are on the hunt for a graffiti artist. If you are a graffiti artist, Sausage, if you know anyone, let us know. Um, but if you are a graffiti artist, we're looking for someone to do something very cool and special for something equally cool and special. So Ooh. you can get in touch with us. Where can they get in touch, Jake? What's our they, email address? They can get in uh, touch. Uh, <laughs> well, really, don't, don't tweet us this because this is like private. So the best place to email us is unplugged at wiredproductions.com. That's unplugged at wiredproductions.com. Battery's not included. Battery. I know the way I said that was a little bit like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, making calls, <laughs> make, make cause yeah. flatulence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like, like side effects. Yeah, exactly. So, so your GP. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, yeah. So, so just to, to echo that then, graffiti artist, you know. Graffiti artist. Yeah, you can, you know, paint on some walls without getting arrested or whatever. This is like good legal graffiti. I don't know if that takes the edge off. That there's no crime attached to it because we can, we, it's weird that it's illegal we, in some places. We, we can it? make an element of danger. You know, yeah. we can hire some people just to have high vis jackets on and a little hat. This is, yeah, all right. Give them a bit of, uh, yeah, theater, yeah. really, I suppose. Yeah, it's like uh, Mark Echo's getting up. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, so the propaganda segment's looking, looking lit. And I think uh, next week we'll have some more information to share about games. Oh, yeah. Certainly more teasers. Well, now we talk about the wider world. Um, because the wired isn't the center of the universe. Other stuff does happen sometimes. Although often we read this, and I kind of wish wired was because a lot of the news has been miserable lately. Let's see what Aaron's got for us this week. News from Google. Wow. Um. By the way, quick vibe check. Sausage. What do you think of the jingles? You're a heavy metal man, right? Matt. I'm heavy metal. Keep going. Who's your, who, <laughs> Every time he goes, oh, no, if, no, no, no. who's your favorite band? Uh, and for the audio listeners at home, that's a Slipknot tattoo on the knuckles. Slipknot, baby. Hell yeah. I wanted to see Slipknot once, but uh, unfortunately, my driver broke his ankle and I ended up not going. That was sad. I'd walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have. I'd, I'd I should. crawl. Um, yeah, so cool. Here we are on the Wired uh, News Stuff. And, and actually, Heavy metal adjacent story here, Aaron. What have you? Yeah. Got? Yeah. 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 So, out of nowhere, out of the blue, yeah. John Romero, who people will know from Doom, mm -hmm. the legendary Doom series from the original, um, he's just announced that he's making a brand new first person shooter. How do we feel about this? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm quite, I'm, I'm here for this. Um, because I, I think also recently he made, um, it, this was for charity. He put together a little team to make some brand new levels for the original Doom. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As, as a charity thing. Um, That's really cool that they've done that because he's like um, with peace and love, quite old now. Yeah. So it's good that they brought him. Back but he out. still looks like an. Inc I, I don't know if you've ever seen John Romero, but he. I have. Yeah. yeah. I, once you see him, you're I'll like, go That's with John him before Romero. we started this. I have an embarrassing John Romero story. If you'd like me to quickly share it. Did you wear his hat? Uh, no, I wore his hair in my drink. I was at I was at I was at game I, I, I was at an event I was at an event at Gamescom, and yep. uh, it was like the the inside the uh, inside Xbox shows. You know, they do with Phil Spencer yeah, 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 comes yeah. out and he's like, "Oh, here are the games," yep. and uh, it's quite a nice atmosphere inside. It. And they were just announcing the Blair Witch um, game or whatever. I went to the bar, ordered a beer. The Blair Witch trailer came on, so I turned and was looking at the trailer. Look back and some woman's hair unfortunately is in me beer so i take their hair out of my beer and i say oh sorry love and she turns around and it's actually john romero 
uh, <laughs> he was there with his wife to announce a new game that they were working on. It was like the Mafia game thing that they were working on. Can you remember like yeah. the Prohibition era game? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I drank the drink uh, just to see if it gave me any sort of magic like game designer powers, like Spider-Man. That's my origin story, you know. But unfortunately, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my embarrassing uh, John Romero story. It is embarrassing, isn't it? That? <laughs> no, I, Good it, though, it's yeah. a story. Yeah. It's a story. It's yeah. a story. That's, that's the way uh, that I said sorry, love, in a very British way as well. I remember, sorry, love. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's about your hair. Actually, I'm John Romero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, sorry. No, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it's cool that it's cool that they Empire of Sin. That was the yeah. game, right? Oh, yeah. That was blinding. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's Not the to one. start with, though. It was too easy to start. They needed yeah. to patch it, and then it got harder. Yeah, yeah. You, you, ex- that was exactly it. They had a bit of challenge, a bit of yeah. juge, and then, yeah. So, yeah, that was it. It was like that game was being announced or whatever, anyway. But that's yeah, not yeah, what yeah. This, that isn't the new story, is it, though? No. I've, I've really derailed this conversation. <laughs> Where was it supposed to be going? <laughs> Are we excited? What 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 could this what what oh, would you want this about to be? Yeah, what you're... would you want this? What would you want this to be? Like, I mean, do you do you expect it to be like a throwback retro thing, something made in like an old engine that's made to look of that time, or do you think it will be something brand new, completely balls to the wall insanity? Like, you know, what what what, what do we expect? Hmm. Well, I don't know about you, Sausage, but I notice that there's a lot of like games these days that are trying to be like the old games on purpose, yeah. the same graphics. Yeah. So a lot of these games that are inspired by Doom, and so it's kind of like why would he do something inspired by himself? It's kind of weird. It's like doing a tribute act of yourself, you know. Yeah. I'd like to see him. Have they, have they gave like a period of how long they're going to take to make it and stuff like that, because that can give you a gist of what it's going to look like. If it's going to be a long time, they're going to look in depth and make it really large and graphically beautiful. If it's going to be quite slapdash and quick, it's I don't, more I, retro. I don't know if they've gone too in-depth on that, because I, I think it was announced, because uh, the main push behind the announcement was, we're recruiting, we need people to come and work on this, we're assembling the A-team, if you're interested in working on a new John Romero game, this is where you apply for a job. Oh, actually, I have, oh. A, I have a little bit of extra info that might help answer some oh. of these questions. Only one. So the, in the job that they're hiring, um, they're saying that they're looking for people who have got experience making levels particularly those with unreal engine 5 experience so that can okay. like, you know so uh uh-huh. yeah so that means yeah. it's going to be Holy very cow. shiny yeah right mm. yeah. oh so but yeah i wonder I, is there any off the top of your Ooh. head boys is there any sort of eras of time that we've not seen a shooter in like i always think there's always space ones there's world war 2 ones um modern day ones is there any like type of like cool you know like sea of thieves did like just i don't know pirate made, they made pirates cool again now yeah. i would love like a, a single mm. player swashbuckling adventure see if he was cool on that but it's because it's multiplayer it distracts me a little bit i don't yeah. think i have to get that from romero games because what <clears> kind of guns is there flintlock pistols that wasn't a great theme, was it? Yeah, just really slow reload <laughs> animations. Is all right. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of a heavy metal stick. soundtrack, it would just be like an accordion, like at the yeah. speed of light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See shanties, like, yeah. So, um, yeah, I- I'm curious. I-, I think in a dream world, I'd like to see a, a horror connection still. But, um, yeah. <gasps> Wouldn't it be cool, though, that if-, if-, if you were loading your flintlock pistol and you set fire to it and the character goes, this gun is lit. No, that's for free. You can have that for free, John <laughs> Romero. Yeah. Edit this out. An apology I'm, I'm, I'm for ashamed. making your hair wet once. Yeah. I'm ashamed. I'm yeah. ashamed. Uh, <laughs> I'm an apologist of that, Aaron, to be fair. So, all right. Okay. Um, I quite like the idea of it. Um, any strong thoughts before we move on to our next one? Or are we all good? Um, yeah. I, I, I would assume that it's not going to be a tribute to himself. So I have a feeling it will move away from Helen Demons. Um, but then could he go the other the other way and say, hey, it's an angelic FPS. I don't know. Um, yeah. You know, go, but Peppa, go Pig. Like, Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Complete that the other day. First good. person sniffer. <laughs> uh, very, very, very good. I actually did see that Sausage had played my friend Peppa Pig recently. I was like, oh, <laughs> there's well, nothing else to play uh, into Arcade uh, Paradise. Am, uh, am, I, am I right in thinking it's actually all right? Peppa Pig. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and Sausage, as a father, you get it. Some people don't get it, but as parents, you get it, don't you? Peppa Pig. Yeah. It's, it's brainwashed you at this point, Mike. It's the same with me. Paw Patrol, Ben and Holly, all of that shit. And oh, Br- God. I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, I played that after. <laughs> 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 I've done Paw Patrol afterwards. There, there we go. Oh, 
Just bad things, that for real. So for, very good. So yeah, hopefully it is. <laughs> I'm looking forward to to John Romero's Peppa Pig shooter. That'd be really good. <laughs> that CZ sheep better run. See if these flintlocks. Yeah, yeah <laughs> brilliant. Exactly. Ace. All Stop right. Stop splashing in the puddle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Muddy boots. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right then, so John Romero done. What else have we got in the tank this week? <laughs> this is a bit of a weird one, and I've included it just so I can tell a story. Yeah. But Platinum Games, so you know, developers behind the wonderful 101, Bayonetta, and so on. Um, Hideki Kamiya works there. The guy who's famous for blocking people on Twitter. Yeah, um, I love that they, you didn't they mention on... Automata. Uh, that's very interesting mm. that you went. It shows your taste, I think. That what yeah. what game that you mentioned by Platinum? The fact that you didn't say Nia. <laughs> Straight away, I was like, "Oh, I'm no Metal Gear Solid." Because, because I haven't played it yet. I haven't played it yet. <laughs> I haven't played. No, 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 no. But here's the thing: I have ordered it on Switch, which comes out in October. So, all right, I'll let you off. Yeah, thank well, you. Thank right, you. Okay. Yeah. Right, sorry. Sorry. But, go on. Platinum Games. Yeah. Uh, Platinum Games. They've um they've hired a new vice president. Um, and a surprising twist. Um, it is an ex member of Nintendo, uh, called Takao Yamani. Yeah. Um, and they've also put out a statement that, you know, disappointment is to help change the direction of the company drastically. Whatever that means, we don't know. We can speculate. But I, I, I flicked past this before I stole it off the internet. Yeah. And I kept reading the name Takao, Takao, Takao. And then I remember, so I, I have some friends who used to work at Nintendo, right? Uh, in the UK. <clears throat> and it turns out Takao used to work um, for NOE, Nintendo Europe. Yeah. But he would work from the UK office, and I remember, um, <laughs> I won't say, I won't say who, but I remember the, uh, being told, "Oh yeah, there's this this Japanese guy uh, called Takao, and sometimes he just emerges from this room. He's in like this own little, he's got his own little bunker at Nintendo, and sometimes he just emerges, and uh, sometimes he'll just talk about arcade machines for a bit, and then disappear. Very mysterious, this guy." Um, and I just always remember hearing these stories about him, and I was like, wow, I wonder what he's up to down there. But the mystery uh, is that now he works for Platinum Games. Do you reckon if we send them a copy of Arcade Paradise, it'll give us some information? <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? I, I, think, I think he would be up for playing Arcade Paradise. Honestly, apparently his little bunker area had arcade machines, like retro arcade machines and stuff. Um, yeah. That, that he would just... I'm not saying that was his. That was not his job. Uh, but he just he just had him there to dabble in and so on. But you know, I, I think what we should also do as well is send RK Paradise to um, Sakurai, uh, the Smash Brothers guy, because you know he uh, nosebleed made Vostok, and Sakurai um, decided to randomly one day write a column his in his Famitsu column and dedicated it to arcade um, to Vostok. Vostok Inc. Just saying, this is. This has been something that I haven't been able to put down. It just keeps going. It's very Moorish. Um, and it's like, wow. Wow, thank you. Thank you, creator of Kirby. Um. <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay, yeah, that's a very good wired connection, yeah. actually. Uh, we'll look forward to him joining us on the podcast next Kirby. week. Um, yeah, yeah, great. we'll reach out. <laughs> um, Platinum Games, then, are... Uh... They made this game called Nier, apparently. I can't believe that you've not played that for some reason. It seems like such a, a U game they, as well. Th they also had, um, they also were working on Scalebound with Microsoft, which uh, got cancelled. Yeah, now sausage. Infamously, you, did you play Nier Automata? Nope. Uh, play, did you play <laughs> the nope. pair of you? <laughs> no, no. Did you play Bayonetta? Nope. All oh. right, well, let's see. Oh. Hang on, we're gonna go through. Oh. The, we'll, we'll go through the, the wheel of disappointment with sausage. I'm just gonna start listening to some games. <laughs> Stop me when you that st wheel. stop me when you've played some, and if not, I'm banning you from Paw Patrol until you've played one of these. All right? Ha did, have you played? <clears throat> have you played any of the bayonetas? Who would I? Um, did you play Vanquish? <laughs> I've, heard, oh, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. Oh, enough. did it? Is it? It no, was, a, it was like know. a robot game, so. but you knee slide no. around everywhere. All right. It was very. Cool. I've heard enough. I'm well, Platinum Gamers fans everywhere, rejoice. Maybe that's the problem, Sausage. Maybe that was... I play the... Command and Conquer. I that, yeah, <laughs> th this is why they, they need uh, Takao to come and fix everything. Because yeah. no one's played their games. You know what I mean? Maybe with him in, <laughs> at the helm, people will pick it up. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, then. I mean, that's, that's kind of all we've got in the news this week, right? Because of the... Yeah. The only other thing I saw was uh, No Man's Sky. 
Um, so I actually want what, to talk what's going about, on with about that Sky? actually. And and I want to talk. Listen to this. This is me trying my absolute hardest sausage to like really bring everything together. Much like yourself and many people on Twitch, No Man's Sky endured a lot of strange weirdos messaging, thinking that they know you and hating on it for no reason. And however, like No Man's Sky and you, there's been a road to redemption for everybody involved. I wanted to talk about No Man's Sky because you've been on Twitch for quite a while. Aaron, you've been in the games industry for quite a while. How old are you now? 25? Um, and uh, <laughs> and essentially, and essentially, I'm being very, I'm being very generous, but you know, yeah, you oh, are. You are. Uh, I was gonna say, I you're being truthful. There's no way, <laughs> no, absolutely not. I change his age every time someone asks, <laughs> and I, I think I get younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, well, I'm, I'm off, I'm off. Yeah, yeah. hi. I was telling yeah. everyone it was he's 25 and I'm 18. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, yeah, we're still getting IDs in the shops, lads. So, um, No Man's Sky, they've they've announced yet again another huge update. And I just wanted your opinions on No Man's Sky because it's a game that everybody has an opinion on. It simply is one of the only games, I think, of, of, of recent memory where nearly everybody has, even if they didn't play it, you kind of remember what happened, right? So, Sausage, a couple, you know, you started on... Um, Twitch, the year that No Man's Sky came out, actually, um, around that year. Mm. Um, what do you remember about No Man's Sky? Anything? Uh, how amazing it was to get in a spaceship and go through to a planet which Starfield won't bleed and have, I've heard. Yeah. And right. actually go through the atmosphere and then you land and then you start making this base and then, like, holy crap, I'm, I'm in on this planet. And it was an amazing experience. When you first ever play No Man's Sky, it's an, it is an amazing. I would never forget my first time. It, it was it was brilliant. I, um, she was eighteen. I oh, know. I mean, No Man's Sky was <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Yeah, you, you, but that No right. Man's Sky is class. It really is good. I don't know what about this new update. I've not actually heard anything about it. I've not played it in a long time, but wow. it, it is a brilliant. Um, they, well, brilliant game yeah and and i think the reason a lot of people say i actually before i, I i'll tell you about the new update in a second but aaron what have you played no man's sky have you got any experience in this or? yeah yeah i i played no man's sky um on release same i got it physical on my ps4 yeah 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 i i played it on i played it on release um the still book edition <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the disappointment edition yeah. it was cool. yeah yeah, no. yeah but no i i played it on release and i I really enjoyed. Um, I, I really enjoyed the same things as you did, sausage. Because um, yeah. do, do you remember the cancelled Battlefield free game, the Star Wars Battlefield game? It was it, the cancelled one. Uh, I think it was made by Radical or something like that. Um, oh, Battlefront. There was some footage. Yeah. Battlefront. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was a cancelled game, and there was um, some footage that leaked that was from like an internal dev presentation. And, you know, you'd start on the planet and you're having some gunfights and you, you'd hop in a TIE fighter, fly into the atmosphere, have some battles, fly into space. Um, and then, you know, you've got two massive ships dogfighting. You can land <laughs> on the ship, take control of the gun turrets and stuff. I was like, wow, that, that, that is so cool. So having that experience wrapped up into this and then the whole infinitesimal amount of planets and the variety, mm. I, I thought, hey, th this is this is um, this is great. Um, but um i didn't see it through to the end i never made it to the center of the universe um but i enjoyed what i played now i have watched that game i, I haven't picked it up and played it again but i've watched the updates and the amount of effort that has been put in to evolve that game into almost something completely new all the elements they've added um and and the the, the gameplay innovation and delivering on what their initial promise was and then some has been incredible to watch yeah, it is, and that's the reason I wanted to ask you guys really because um, I played it recently. I got a Steam Deck, and like No Man's Sky is just one of the games on there, so I thought, oh, I'll check in on it. You know, yeah. Um, oh, it's like a different game. It's like a different game now. You can customize like your spaceships. You can make make a zoo on your own planet. The amount of like you why know, not? You can like basically yeah, you can like raise and breed animals, farm them. You can you can, create, you, like there's, can there's loads of stuff. There's like proper dog fights in space now. You can recruit you can recruit NPCs to go out on scavenging missions for you. It's nice. unbelievable. And and they just announced a new update uh today, and it's all about your well, you've got a spaceship, but what you might not know is you can get a freighter, which is like 
a home for all of your spaceships. So you can have a collection of 12, like a big space garage. Yeah, and, yeah. And the, the big Ooh. update, this one now, is that you can, it's the big update for that. So there's, you can base build, you can have a space base, literally. Like That's a, cool. Yeah, so there's, there's all of that. And you can even like go into certain oh. parts of the universe and find disgusting squid creatures and ride them instead of uh, ships. So you can actually have like weird space whales and squids and use them as ships and that. <laughs> It's um, it uh, turns into Ark. Honestly, at this point, it's it's basically Ark in space to be yeah. So so yeah, it's just yeah, some something. It's, it's 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 so, it's so weird because I mean this this is the type of thing that you you usually see in a live service game, shall we say? Right. Yeah. But, but this this is this is not a, a live service game. It is a game that was released. <laughs> Yeah, and then they're just like oh, six actually, years we're just ago. Gonna throw all this cool stuff at it, and it's like, wow, yeah, wow, it's impressive, absolutely. And if if you have if you fell in love with that game early on, I can't imagine, you know, I, I can't imagine how appreciative people are of everything that has been added, um, and that it has been kept fresh, and they haven't just gone, we'll just do No Man's Sky two. Um, it's it's, yeah, we're just evolving this game, and it's 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 quite, it's beautiful. It's also it's quite beautiful. interesting to hear you both. And you know, not just you two, but everyone speaks fondly of it, considering how everybody was unhappy when it came out. Nearly every single person was unhappy. There's a bit of yeah. a the closest I've seen to that in a very long time. And I've got to be very careful what I'm saying. Cyberpunk it was cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's <clears throat> that's the last time I I saw mm. gen genuine disappointment. Uh, you know, of course, for those who aren't quite aware, who have been living under a rock, uh, CD Projekt Red the famed developer of the groundbreaking and highest rated RPG of all time, The Witcher 3. And they did the other two witches, but 3 is the really good one. Uh, they, mm -hmm. did, they, they, built, they did Cyberpunk, which was a tour de force sausage. You can remember the uh, the year, the years of marketing, the chairs that they were sending out to certain streamers. My the, lord. The, the Adidas shoes. And it turns out that the... Um, <laughs> The they, they, they did do that. Remember, they were giving everybody. It was, yeah, it yeah. was crazy. Yeah, and then the game. Came I didn't get no idea their shoes. What the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. They were they were collaborating with everybody. I think. I think. I need to. The just... Wire Productions do shoes. Well, 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 well we, we we do we do Shaq's footprints. I'm a size ten. Yeah, oh, Shaq. Footprint. Size twenty two. Oh yeah. <laughs> Signed on my wall. That is. Is it is it really size twenty two? It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, it, uh, mate. Like it's it's ridiculous. That's I was. Shoe size. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to like dream my life away. The game was blinding as well. I like. Yeah. I enjoyed. It. I played that a couple of times. Wasn't it be Barack nice? Barack as well. But, yeah. <laughs> Imagine having Shaq on here. I wonder what Shaq thinks of No Man's Sky. I've been punched by Shaq. <laughs> this these stories are getting out of control. I thought the John Romero hair one was good. Then we had the we had the arcade hell of uh, yeah. Takayo, and yeah, now we've got Shaq, yeah, yeah. Shaq punching people. Yeah, people are going to think we're making this up for clickbait. To be honest, it's true. It's true. There's a, there's a video of it. There's um, a video on it. So if you know where to look. It, it... <laughs> right. So <laughs> that's very good. All right. So speaking of sending ridiculous amounts of uh, products left, right, and center, um, let's talk about some of the acquisitions. Sausage, you've checked out a couple of these podcasts, but you might not have seen this before. So uh, this is the financial segment of the uh, podcast. Um, I see that you didn't wear a suit. But don't worry, neither did we. Deals for meals, deals for meals, deals for meals, deals for meals. That's that's my that's that's my favorite one actually. That's a good one. It's good to play. Play Napalm Death that bit. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. This is the segment of the um the podcast where we talk about some of the crazy, 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 crazy acquisitions in the games industry. Um. There's all sorts of weird uh, deals going on behind the scenes. Companies buying companies. Um. Microsoft buying pretty much everybody. Um, but what have we got on this week, Aaron, in the financial segment of this podcast? I need to put on my suit. I don't have a suit. It's too hot. Um, yeah. Now, Jake, I don't know if you remember, but these two things were both featured together on a previous episode, and I wanted to sandwich them together just to bring some continuity. Okay, some closure. Some, yeah, some, some, some closure. Help people move on with their lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all need it. Um, but the, the first thing out of the out of the gate and sausage, you might have feelings about this. I don't know. Um, but PlayStation has confirmed it's completed its acquisition of Bungie. 
uh, for $3.6 billion. Wow. Um, and that has gone through. <laughs> that is complete. Sausage, you, you made some faces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the destiny, bruv. Oh, what the... <laughs> You can have destiny. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, here's the thing, though. I think, I think, um, now, now that it is confirmed and final, what what do you think that relationship is going to look like? Do you think there's going to be a journey into like me and my ex. new IP? <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know, uh... <laughs> so D- destiny is uh, the 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 I guess the. Uh... The cash cow that Bungie own, right? Actually, yeah. they haven't mm. really got much going on aside from Halo and Destiny. Um, that's pretty much it. I think they made a couple of games like in the 90s, but that was like, you know, they were like edutainment games or games about mazes or something like that. So mm. their really big one was Halo, which of course is like kind of been taken off them now. And I, it's 343. Yeah, it's 343. Yeah. And, it, and the Halo series is. I don't want to say it's still going strong, but it's certainly going, isn't it? I haven't played it, you see, the new one. Um... Neither, neither have I. And it's, it's so weird to say this because I was thinking about this. I went to the, I went to the cinema recently to watch a film. Yeah. Um, I went which... yesterday just to just hang out with uh, some aircon. You... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did not enjoy that film. You sent us some photos and it was just like... Anyway, let's not name that film. Um, but I went, I went to see um, that same movie. Um, and one of the adverts before was for the um, Halo TV show on Paramount Plus. And I just had a moment. I went to watch this film alone. And um, it just got me thinking about Halo. And why? I, 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 there's, there's no doubt that it's still got some good sway behind it. Um, but why isn't it as dominant I guess um, because you know, you know, you remember when the original Xbox launch and Halo came through, mm. that and like the, the 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 two sequels after it was it was it was prime. Do you know what I mean? It was it was these are essential must play games, and then slowly over time, I feel like that's kind of wavered. And I don't know. I was kind of thinking, is is it because you know what the Xbox could do graphically at the time? Um, and also the style of gameplay it had, um, and you know we're in the we're in the the core moment of online console gaming really exploding, right? Um, and I wonder if that was those things aren't as unique to us or special these days. Um, and I wonder if because of that, it's taken some of the shine off because it it isn't as revolutionary. I'm um, oh, sorry, that's not me saying it's not good, but it's not as revolutionary as it initially was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sasha, you play you played the, uh, any of the Halo games? I did, and then I played. I played the first one, like you said, was like holy yeah. cow. Yeah. When you first yeah. put that into that first Xbox. Yeah. For its time, oh, it, it was just the, the, yeah the, the music, <laughs> the seeing that the the. the, the Oh, it's just you start off on the ship, don't you? Which is kind of like what you're used to, isn't it? You kind of used to these small levels, so you, the, yeah. the, 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 the tutorial areas are kind of shit. It was the first time ever landing on what, on the planet yeah. or the ring, it, and you realize, yeah, and, the halo. and you look up and you just the, the halo, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the halo, yeah, the ring, and, and you can look up, at, like you say, and you can it was just, see the I see the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then and then you see the. I think the first thing that happens is one of those. Uh, they're called the banshee, right? The 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 yeah. ships fly, and it's like a search party looking for you. And then you realize what I can. Exp- and then can you remember the first time you could get into a a vehicle? Can you remember the first yeah. time getting into a vehicle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a shooting game like properly, like that was something. So that was like, yeah, I think you're right, Aaron. That was like, I think, and, and the way that the, exactly the way that sausage is describing it. it Exactly. It was. Second it time. was mind blowing for its time. It was. It, it's a bit like Zelda Rock Arena of time. There just be. There would never be another moment like that. It's another game that you just play and you go. Yeah, yeah. that was good. Yeah, exactly. The closest was, I've it, got to that in years, and I don't think we're going to see another game that's anywhere remotely close to this for a long time. Is Elden Ring, right? Elden Ring has got the, the mix of everything. Personally, however, yeah. however, it's not like that in the sense that yeah, Ocarina of Time. Oh my God, Hyrule Field you know all these mm. different areas and you can go back to them later on and different things are happening that's you, you turn into an adult yeah. and then everything's a different size to how it originally uh, like, was you, and it's like wow yeah yeah like, i was amazed by just being able to go fishing 
And yeah, the fishing. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, me yeah. and my dad, me and my fishing dad spent hours in that yeah. fishing hole. Honestly, we yeah. just passed the control. There was nothing else like it. It's like, oh, yeah, I've caught it a lunker. Like yeah. <laughs> well, so actually, and you jump on your horse and then start riding up. <laughs> yeah. You know, you start playing your ocarina and silly little songs just for the hell of it. Yeah. It sounds yeah. good. Yeah, well, that that's the thing. So, so, so maybe that actually, what we're on about, maybe that's a good point. Maybe, maybe, ocarina of time was there. Obviously, that wasn't the first Zelda, right? But it was like that. No. It had that moment. And yet, all those years on, look at how people reacted to Breath of the Wild. People would still still talk about that like it's groundbreaking. It was doing something <laughs> new. El- Elden Ring. That's the reason that truly Elden Ring isn't. It's it's incredible, but it, it it's got that kind of Breath of the Wild esque map. And and yeah. so, and what's so funny is so many games are likened to Breath of the Wild now, right? And that's like so so Halo Infinite isn't anywhere near that. No one's ever gonna go, oh, that's quite a Halo Infinite mm. type map. That's quite a yeah, Halo yeah, Infinite yeah, type. Yeah. Because Halo Infinite's not yeah. really got that. It's not got that same. You know, it's it's in fact a lot of people were a bit like, oh, Halo Infinite's a free to play, servicey thing, and so maybe that's something yeah. to do with it. So so speaking of free to play, um shooters in space destiny yeah we, me really trying to wrangle that together um is, is oh yeah the it, topic the topic was was that, <laughs> we're on a, so that was a bungee of old halo so, yep. that's so, done. so that was all about the bungee yeah exactly we can't help ourselves so we're Get always back to cows it's fine yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just we want to talk about good games I mean, yeah. so, yeah. so 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 destiny so i'm actually a destiny apologist i'm actually well i've kind of soured actually um like sausage i am a dad and it, i feel that that game really disrespects your time i bought yeah. destiny for full price and then i bought the dlc for full price a year later there was another bit of dlc and if you bought that all of the other stuff was free suddenly think and, and at this current state i think destiny 2 is now free to play and yeah. all of the things that i spent about 200 quid on are now free so like an uh-huh. idiot I... I spent money on it when i could have not yeah disrespectful I... It, it, it is. And so here's the thing. When I first started playing Destiny, I was like, this is incredible. Like, it feels mm. good. And there's a lot to do, lots of places yeah. to go. Um, it wasn't quite what I expected, but I was still like, this is a good time. I started playing from the get go with my brother. Um, I, I moved away from home a long time ago. So we lived many hours apart. <clears throat> but that's how we'd get together. We'd have a chat and, and play some Destiny together. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest problem with that is. He is a dad. I was busy with work as well. Um, and there were some of the friends that would join in as well. And, you know, when you have different life things going on, it's impossible to maintain the momentum. So you come back and everyone's done everything. They're already miles ahead. And then you're this person who's like sh- yep. straggling along. And it's like, oh, don't worry. We'll carry you through this. It's like, I don't want to be carried. I want to do. <laughs> I want to have the experience I'm meant to have, not like, oh yeah, I'm I'm doing one HP damage with my guns while everyone's just like, yeah, doing it, and I'm like, yeah. it's it's not. It it just becomes a bit of a shame then because it's like I enjoyed the experience, but not the experience of that you are kind of forced to keep up if you play mm-hmm. in a group. Well, th- th- first of all, you're dead right. Second of all, seems like none of us are really hugely in- into Destiny uh, at this point, and so. Um, I guess it goes without saying that three point six billion dollars is that's a lot of a lot ice of lollies. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of chicken sandwiches, isn't it? But, but I do believe I, I do believe they have said that. Um, you know, <laughs> even though it is now PlayStation uh, that that owned them, it's not going to be you know platform exclusive or anything like that. So I guess for PlayStation, it's like okay, well let's let's take a bit of moolah from the Xbox crowd. But then again, Xbox has Game Pass. Um and I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm I'm interested to see what they do. If they do anything new or if it's a continuation of Destiny, it'll be interesting to see what um what the plans are. I yeah, and uh, they better be good plans for three point six billion dollars. Okay, so that is closure. And uh, would you like to smash through this last one before we uh, yeah. we we take a, a good moment to finalize with our. Uh, amazing special guest about sausage final thought. Um, yeah, so uh, this this again is one we spoke to about. Get a notepad and write something down here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> quickly, quickly write a script. Uh, um, <laughs> but no, um, so the Activision um, buyout by Microsoft um, could be wrapped up as soon as next month. Um, so 
uh, Microsoft have triggered uh, 30 days, allegedly, with the FTC, which helps wrap up the deal. Um, what isn't clear at the moment is if Activision has submitted their part of the information that's mm. required uh, to trigger that 30 days. Um, but it could be getting to an end and a, a final conclusion. The big, the big thing about this um, is that the deal has also been investigated by the UK's CMA. Um, <laughs> So if they find fault, it means that there could still be an issue with the deal going ahead, regardless of if America agree or not. Um, I just wanted to, because, you know, we spoke about these two things a, a, a couple of months ago, um, and I thought it'd be good to bring them all together to see where they no, are. because it's good, yeah. Notoriously, you know, Microsoft made the Activision Blizzard announcement first, and then a couple of, I think a week or so after PlayStation announced the Bungie deal, and everyone was like, oh, my PlayStation have done this because Microsoft are doing this. And it's like, that doesn't just happen. Um, but, you know, PlayStation have completed um, what they said they would do much quicker. So um, it's just interesting yeah. to get a good look at what's going no, on. No, and there. it's good because actually I think the, 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 the announcement about this was months ago. So for those, yeah. that, you know, a lot of people who listen probably don't have an understanding of some of the expertise here that we have like you know um so it's good to bring that up so nice one um all right then sausage whilst we've got you i'd like to before we we wrap up with a good bit of advice i'd just like to ask you a very simple question because <coughs> to be honest with you i ask a lot of the developers this and stuff like that and i've got somebody on who's played more games than most people have uh, recently certainly developers and the only games that we've properly spoke about that you've played has been pepper pig and paw patrol so i was just wondering a man of your stature, your experience, your wisdom, your knowledge, <laughs> streaming for many, many years, you know. Um, I wanted to ask God. you, like, what games that you played recently that you've really been feeling? Like, what, what, what's been good lately? You mentioned that there's not much to play at the moment. What's the last it's time? Dead at the moment. Yeah. Uh, first of all, hard to disagree, but um, yeah, let's look at what what is it that even if it was the last couple of um, couple of years, I think I think I remembered last time I checked out your stream. I think you were playing Power Wash Simulator. I think. <laughs> I have been doing Power Wash Simulator. Yeah, uh, I've been yeah. doing all the achievements on it because I've got nothing else to play at the moment. It's uh, like I say, it's a bit dead. The last time we massively grinded a game was probably doing the Athenas on Sea of Thieves. Yeah. And a bunch of us were doing that. And that was uh, just a very fun uh, amount of hours, hundreds and thousands. Uh, another game would be Dead by Daylight. We did mm. a lot of hours on. Right. Uh, done yeah. it. They're, they're about to change the whole way it works or something that's going on at the moment. Mm. So I need to look into that. Yeah. So uh, Dead by Daylight, Sea of Thieves, um, Rainbow Six Siege. Wow. We did a lot of that. Yeah. But there's there's been nothing other than that. It's just sort of jumping in and out of titles, really. Yeah. So, um, so actually, all three of those games that you mentioned then seem to be quite... I guess you and your community playing together, right? Like the yeah. multiplayer focus. So yeah, and then when you're by yourself, just jumping in into single player games, is that right? Or, do you, or you're very community focused uh, player? I'm very multiplayer community. Get involved. It, it, it's I don't really like playing solo titles as such. Yeah, unless it's a simulator type game, I can. I'm very much more happy. I'm, I'm happy just to jump on Euro Truck and do a long journey. Um, yeah. You know, simulator type games are very easy to do by yourself. You know, you can just enjoy it by yourself. Um, story driven games lately, there's been nothing. Um, but I'm very much more multiplayer hmm. and get the community involved and playing with me because the, the the days are much more happier when there's a group of you, whether it be Fortnite. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well. All those. You know, I guess you know. Um... We're fortunate, all three of us remember a world without uh, online gaming. Uh, mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. before then, there was a lot of single player games. And of course, there was still multiplayer, but it was kind of like, you know, trying to tell your friends that you weren't looking at their screen when you were playing GoldenEye. Them, but really <laughs> were. Oh, um, I'm not looking. Uh, yeah. um, so Sausage, you, you mentioned single player story games and, you know, not yep. really catching your eye lately. Uh, if I was nope. to ask you, like, maybe you're not your favorite ever. It's not gospel. You're not going to have to, like, attest to this at the court. I already know what you're going to ask. Super Mario 64. Is it? That's a really great pick, man. That's a, I was going to say. Super Mario yeah. 64. You remember when we were talking earlier about groundbreaking games? Yeah. When yeah. that N64 came out and it had yeah. that Mario title. Yeah. Blowing my mind. And then the 007 obviously followed. But uh, Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mario 64. 
That all right. I love watching it on Twitch. I love people speed running it. Um, yeah. I love everything about that game. That was I, brilliant. I, come on, and co- come on, and co- come on. On my lunch break, I, I this is really weird because on, on my lunch break, I, I listen to like my Spotify playlist or whatever, and Dia Dia Docs was on there. Yes, the, 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 of, of, of Mario sixty four, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So um, I've been I've been my little girl, uh, my eldest, she's eleven, and she's got a Switch, and so she's been doing Animal Crossing and all that. And then I bought the the Mario All yeah. Stars thing to try it. Good Hell man. Yeah. And, That's it. And she, and she, she's packs. like she's been enjoying it. She can't quite get her head around why the controls are so bad. But, yeah. But apart from that, like like oh, yeah. you know. Um, and can I ask you like, did you have you played Odyssey? Did you play the, the, the yeah? Uh, I played all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what do you reckon? Decent? Odyssey yeah. is not my favorite Mario of all time. Um, mm-hmm. it's good. It's up there. But Super Mario World Three was probably my favorite of all time. With the map and going around, and that was the first sort of time I, I experienced maybe co-op. You know, you're playing with your mate. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could have Luigi and Mario doing it, and then you'd argue about the shops. You know, it's my shop. No, it's not. It's my shop. Oh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was. <laughs> it's just nostalgia for me. I'm getting old. Yeah. So that, that's getting that's old. Mario Mario on on the NES. That was wasn't it with the like the that was the NES and an SNES on, on, as well. On, on yeah. the front cover, he's like flying in the air. That's that it, one, isn't it? Flying. Tanuki yeah. Mario. Tanuki, that's the word I was looking for. That's yeah. That's the one. My yeah, favorite. One of my is, uh, Aaron, have you got a favorite? Mine, mine's definitely Super Mario World, the first appearance of like Yoshi. Yoshi. The soundtrack to that. Is, oh, the yeah. Yoshi, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't decide. I I, 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 I couldn't it? I couldn't pick one. Yeah. It's like picking a favorite child, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Apart from this, like even more than nine of them. There's like 78 it would be even harder yeah. you know what I mean? like, <laughs> you know all right no no yeah. i was really curious sausage because like yeah like you know we, we all remember the days before that when it was yeah arguing over shops you still argue over shops now when you're playing sea of thieves or fortnite but it's just loot isn't it I suppose. yeah um, well, you talk about groundbreaking games i mean gta 3 when it first went on ps2 and it was like 3d that was groundbreaking and mind-blowing as well yeah. do, do you know what vice city followed and i was like holy cow this game is unbelievable do, do you know what sorry sorry to go back i am going to say super mario brothers 3 as well yeah. because mm. that is the game that i remember playing with my sisters as well and we'd pass we'd, you know we'd all pass the That's controllers it. back and forth and stuff and the reason why that was very useful is that they've got very good memories and we're good at um do you know when you had the the card selection game and you had to get pairs of cards, and then you'd get mm-hmm. the items that were on the cards. They were very good at remembering where all of those were. So um, <laughs> it was just a good time. The, the, the card game was brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it it was really groundbreaking that game, and that that map is iconic. You have to yeah. be there, man. For any yeah. of you like twenty year olds listening, just trust us, all right? Yeah, but uh, you know, and and, and yeah. then there was all the things about oh wow, well, you can, you can find the magic whistles that take you to the special warp world. Yeah, and, hidden you know, warp pipes you, behind the. Yeah, map you could that. use that use a hammer to knock yeah. through uh, knock through a brick and go into a special section on the, yeah. the desert. State. It was like, yeah, this is so cool. Wow. So grab the whistle, bend down, you fall through the map, and you be yeah. on the map. And yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, yeah on, on the great straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant times. Yeah, I, I love that. So yeah, GTA uh, 3 was another groundbreaking accomplishment, wasn't it? Um, Probably the first major example of like a sandbox open world game, I think. I was thinking about this recently. I was trying to think. So, you know, people could argue that, yeah, Ocarina of Time was like open field, I think they call it, because it was still loading into places. But I think yeah. GTA 3 is the first example I remember where you could kind of just the go and have map. fun and stuff like that. And mm. I, yeah, uh, yeah. I, you know, I I never revisited GTA 3 Sausage. I know you played it over the last year, right? Haven't you? You jumped into the, the definitive edition. GTA 3, I can't... oh yes, the, re- the remasters the, 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 and yeah, stuff I did. That's yeah. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you dabbling yeah. on that on Twitter or whatever, and I was thinking, because they released like a pack of them, didn't they, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, this, it's... Uh, yeah, uh, I could I could do this all day, but unfortunately, we've all got uh, up to melt in peace. So, uh, sausage. We've spoken to quite a few streamers on here before. Um, to be honest, uh, what do you mean? I was third choice. What? The... No, no. We, well, <laughs> right, we, we, he's your final fault. We, <clears throat> we've spoken. To, <laughs> we've spoken to lesser streamers than you, and uh, we've been saving the best Ooh. till last. No. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i uh i don't think ninja's any, a bit too big then yeah. any of the, the people I, I don't think i'd have ninja on i think i think would be matey for seo but i don't think i'd have anything nice to say to the guy to be honest but i want I, i'd like to know what your uh your, your takeaway is from from your years of experience but not not, not your personal experience but 
What advice, simply, would you give to somebody now who wanted to start, or maybe they've started recently and they they don't quite understand if it's worth it to grind for partner or what happens next or whatever. And, and this is how we can see us out. Okay. So, so give your advice and then you can do a nice farewell speech and, and everything like that. But I'd like to hear, you know, what you've learned in the six years that you, maybe I should word it like this sausage. What did you wish someone had told you when you started? And then you can tell the people at home. Ooh. How about that? First bit of advice would be never to mod anyone to your channel unless you are willing to invite these people around to your house. And that's what I mean about getting used to okay. someone, getting to know this person. Don't just, because moder moderators can mess up your channel. So make sure you are willing to, if you're going to mod someone, make sure that person, you'd be willing to even invite them around and have a meal. My second bit of advice would be to network. Don't go into channels and say, I'm a streamer. I'm going live in a minute, things like that. When I say network, I mean DM a streamer. Say, say for argument's sake, me. You know, tag me in. Would you be willing to play with this game with me? Mm -hmm. Would you want to go, go and do a co-op? Network with not only people, companies. Um, that's that's the first bit. Um, don't self-promote is, is a major one. But what I would say is take your time, stay positive, do not fall into the black hole of expectations. Oh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be partner. I will do this. I will do that. It's okay. It's okay to think that way. Yeah. But you've got to set yourself up. I know it sounds weird, but set yourself up to fail because then anything comes from that, whether it be affiliate, whether it be a, a 20 view stream, every single stream, right. 40 years, you're then feeling amazing about that. If it ends up, okay, this is not for me, then you're not going to be so disheartened and so depressed because it is a hard game. It is a dog eat dog. Mm. If you want to do this full time, um, and believe me, please listen to me when I say it is dog eat dog. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what other really information, just, just be happy, stay positive, take care of yourselves and take care of each other as i said in my, every single one of my streams yeah. because you do you take care of every single person that comes into your stream um appreciate every single click that you get um and bond with those people you will get some let's say <clears throat> deeps come in mm. instantly ban them don't let them get in your head because the moment you do that you have a negative stream that's what the ban button's there for or, you know, if it's not so bad, time them out first. See how they are. They might be just testing the waters. Um, always give someone a second chance. If you do ban them and they say, sorry, I want to come back, blah, blah, blah. These are just little tips that I wish I was told. <laughs> yeah. And if you do explode, do you do become a big streamer. Don't become one of those big-headed, arrogant beep beeps. Because if you do... <laughs> Your viewers will collapse and people won't lose respect for you. Yes, you might have a bank full of money, but you are a complete beep beep again. Do you know who I am? Yeah, exactly. That's Do the... you know? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> stay it. humble is my, my stay humble, positive, happy, and appreciate everything and everyone that you get. Well, that was lovely. So thank you very, very much, Sausage, for that very like level-headed advice. And this isn't somebody who's been streaming for 20 minutes right this is somebody with years of experience so i hope everyone listening takes that in thank you very much aaron i will see you next week for more melting heat sausage we'll see if um we can help you <laughs> help a mexican you wife uh, we'll see if we can get you out of that arcade mate it must be hot in there that's what i was gonna say all right thank arcade you, paradise let's go Wired. Unplugged.